Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is backhand, sensing hand gesture via back of the hand. My name is Zhe Wei Lin. I'm from National Taiwan University. Communication is how people exchange ideas and the feelings. Human hand gestures play a major role in human communication. Not only can uh, hand gestures be used in a normal conversations, but we can also talk to a computer via gestures. But how can we make our hand gestures be understood by a computer? The most intuitive way is to give a computer human-like ability to sense our hands. To sense hand gestures, body parts around a hand are less to start with. We make a classification for hand gestures interface for, uh, based on three common input signal sources. The first category, part A, is finger-based hand gesture interfaces. This classification is to measure the overall fraction of fingers. A cyber curve and the 5DT curve are data curve-like devices. Sensors are directly located at finger joints. Although they accurately capture a finger movement, the curve uh, form factor reduces tactile feedback and interferes with finger movement. To overcome the discomfort of data growth, another approach such as six sense and digits uses a wearable cameras to recognize finger gestures. However, occlusion, heavy computation, and large power consumption are problematic for these uh, vision-based systems. The second category, part B, is wristband hand gesture interfaces. This classification is to measure the physical properties of the wrist. They are the most friendly and acceptable interfaces due to their placement. Gesture wrist use capacitive uh, sensors to recognize a small set of gestures. Handbone employees by acoustic matters supporting classification accuracy rates around 19% for four gestures. Another system press infrared sensor around the wrist to recognize hand gestures. Wrist press use an array of four sensitive resistors supporting five gestures and an accuracy rate uh, greater than 80%. Because of the reduced tendon movements on the wrist, this approach provides a lower accuracy, even with a small number of gestures. The third classification, Pass C, is on best hand gesture interfaces. This classification is to use phone on sensing to extract movements and the gesture of a user's finger. Phone on ENG help uh, recognize full gestures at an accuracy rate of 79%. A commercial product named Mayo also uses ENG for gesture detection. However, ENG systems require high data rate and a high power consumption due to extensive signal processing. These are the most common three signal sources in related work. So, we have been thinking, is there anywhere else that has not yet been explored for hand gesture interfaces? The common saying, I know it like the back of my hand, but we are not actually familiar with our, our own bodies, right? So, now, uh, take a moment uh, and have a look on the back of your hand as you move your fingers. The tender movements reveal the truth about the hand gestures. Physical change on the back of the hand caused by finger motions are visible to human eye. However, such physical change are so tiny that it's difficult to uh, detect it through the most sensing techniques. Sensing hand gestures is all about correcting data of finger fractions. The closer the signal source to the fingers, the greater the accuracy, but less acceptable. The back of the hand sits in the middle between the two extremes. 
Sensor placement at this location interferes with less than ground-based uh, approaches and provides better recognition than sensing at wrist and forearms. It is a completely uh, new indivi uh, individual category. We call this new classification as backhand based hand gesture interfaces. We conclude that strain gauge sensors best fit our requirements. This sensor can sensitively and now to measure very small tension and the compression of an object. We use uh, artificial skin as a sensor carrier. It can be a repeatedly affixed to our skin. To measure the information of multiple individual spots on the back of the hand, we extend it into an array. Our prototype, backhand, consists of a reusable artificial skin on which strain gauge sensors are arranged in a two-row configuration. This video shows backhand prototype. To better understanding gesture recognition accuracy and the effects of sensing locations, we conducted a user study. The purpose of this evaluation is first to investigate the accuracy of several row configuration ranging from the back of the hand to with wrist. And second, to uncover the most promising location that maximize the performance of identifying hand gestures. We recruit 10 participants for training data collection, aged between 20 to 32, nine right-handed. We test 16 popular hand gestures for each participant. It consists of gestures say from American Sign Language, such as digit from zero to 10, and four gestures with Asian culture meanings are also gestured in American Sign Language. Finally, a neutral hand gestures, relaxing gestures, adds up to a total of 16 gestures. To capture all tendon and muscle activity, row configuration laying across the hand width is the most intuitive pattern. A row markers evenly spaced between the sampling scope, then our two row configuration prototype aligns to this A row for four rungs. So A rows require four, uh, four rungs, uh, 16 gestures. Each gesture repeats 10 times. 20 sensor data re recorded. Totally resulting 12,800 data per person. In the following, our results show that. First, we show a heat map here Ray stands for tension, and the blue stands for compression sensor value. When the heat map overlaps with a hand, we can see that strain sensor attach among, al along with the superficial tendons of middle finger are stretched. Well, uh, sensor sensors in between neighbor tendons are compressed. These are uh, sensor readings of all 16 gestures performed by one of the participants. Clearly, we can uh, see a pattern much different across 16 gestures. Thus, a gesture classification can be possible. But this chart results from one of the participants. What about the others? Are they having the exact same result as the chart shown here? Well, the answer is no. This diagram shows the gesture A performed by 10 participants. Patterns are way uh, different across users. This may imply the difficulty of cross user capabilities. And yes, 27.4% uh, cross user accuracy rate is low for a leave one user out cross validation. What about personalized accuracy rates when using a leaf one trial out tenfold cross validation for some sensing location? Uh, in this diagram, each entry is a heat map of 10 trial of one participant. 
the sensor value patterns are pretty much consistent when performing the same gesture by a single user. Result of a tenfold cross validation are shown here. 93% uh, sensing closer to the knuckles. 95.8% uh, which is the highest on the second row from the knuckles. 85% which is the lowest, almost the at the least. So the best result is here, 95.8%. Uh, also known as the most uh, promising locations, such location is not what we expect at first. We thought it should be uh, right at the knuckles since joints are the main moving uh, parts on hand. Next, uh, we examine the misclassification rates of the gesture using the result from the most uh, promising locations. The accruing of false detection is usually resolved from the similarity of hand shapes. For example, the gesture ace has the lowest two positive rates among 16 gestures and has a chance of 4% to be classified as gesture 10 because the two gestures only differ by thumb. Another reason for misclassification is associated with weak physical signals. For example, the gesture L has a false negative rate of 5% for being uh, classified as I love you gestures. The physical change on the pinky, pinky finger are less biased compared to that of other fingers. We have some limitation. First, a generalized model to feed all users is one of the limitation of using such signal source. Second, our sensor can be damaged by applying an excessive stress. Third, the arti uh, artificial skin absorbing sway causes decrease of adhesion. We continue to look for solution such as smart skin system. Uh, this will be all become part of future work. In conclusion, first, we explore a new signal source, tendon activity on the back of hand for hand gesture recognition. Second, we develop a prototype using strain sensors that can sense 16 popular hand gestures at 95.8% accuracy. Third, we identify the most promising location in row configuration on the back of the hand. Uh, finally, we end up with this video. Thanks for your lesson. Uh, any question? Uh, thank you for a great talk. Uh, I'm Rufi Du from U University of Maryland, College Park. Uh, I'm wondering how long does the training session take for each individual user? And uh, what will be the challenge if we uh, train a cross-user model between, what if we use fewer gestures? 
to train a general model for multiple users. Thank you. Um, sorry, we are not native English speaker. Can you just speak a little slowly oh, again? Oh, oh. Sorry. Okay, yeah, sorry. sorry. Uh, I'm wondering how long does the training session takes for each individual user? How long uh, does the training take? Yes. Okay, that's the first question. Uh, and what's the second, second one? Second question is, uh, what if we train a general model for multi-users with fewer gestures? Uh, so you mentioned that uh, the currently the model is trained for each individual user. What if we train a multi-model multi-user model, but with fewer gestures. So uh, fewer gestures. Um, multiple users. And multi cross user, is yes. it? Okay, um, for the first question, uh, only five minutes to train uh, the 16 mod, uh, yeah, all 16 mm -hmm. hand gestures That's for cool. a single user. And, um, uh, we've tr uh, we've never tried for um, less uh, less gestures mm -hmm. um, for cross user, but we did one experiment mm -hmm. uh, comparing to wrist flex. Mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, five um, five gestures for single user, and we only compared that it has even higher. Uh, gesture uh, recognition uh, accuracy rate. Yeah, sorry, we didn't do uh, okay. cross user for less hand gesture set. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think a cross u cross user with fewer gestures might be uh, might yield to better applications. Okay. Uh, but yeah. anyway, it's a great talk and great idea. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, this is a trend from Georgia Tech. A uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I have a question. So one limitation you mentioned is about uh, you need personalized model for each user. And uh, so it seems like the data collected in one session. Have you tried, like, um, if the user take it off and wear another day, how that will influence uh, the accuracy of the system? Uh, the how about trying what? Sorry again. So if the user takes the hardware off yes. and wear it another day, do they need to retrain the system? Uh, how well that works? Uh, yes, it does. And when, yeah, when you take it off and put it back on, yes, we need to recalibrate it and we need to retrain it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's another limitation. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes. Hi, uh, Chen Yu from Tsinghua University. Uh, in your research, you test uh, the 16 judges. So can you give uh, estimation about the uh, upper bound of how many? Uh, judges it can uh, recognize. Oh, we only tested 16, sorry. We never tried uh, beyond that number of gestures. Uh, according yeah. to your expectation about the signal? Well, we will expect um, lower um, Lower accuracy rates. Um, yeah, well, we didn't do that. Yeah, do the do further user study, so we're not sure. But definitely, it gets lower. So, so another question is that: Is it? Uh, do you think it is possible for for the system to re reconstruct the movement, the whole movement of the hand? Uh, reconstruct? You mean like tracking or tracking the continuous movement? Uh, only, well, no, we don't think it can, it can do um, like tracking or hand construction. We don't think it's capable of doing that using strain gauge. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's kind thank of, you. yeah, thank you.